this is Tim Sandal and uh, welcome to this video and in this video we're going to be talking about uh, fungal contamination of pharmaceutical products looking at the key fungi that we could well find in a pharmaceutical facility a little bit about identification methods and about what some of this information tells us so this is a short introductory video um, there's obviously a lot more to read on the subject but it's to introduce the um, risks posed by uh, fungi pharmaceutical environments. Okay, so we'll uh, begin the uh, main topic. So in pharmaceuticals, um, if you look at the information relating to recalls for microbial contamination, and then divide that further and look at those recalls that are relating to fungi, then it's quite clear that that data is signaling to us that the uh, primary types of fungi that are triggering the recalls are filamentous fungi rather than um, yeast. And these fungi, if they're present in pharmaceutical environments, have a particular um, hazard mechanism, which is the ability of spores to spread through um, aerosols or by spore dispersion mechanisms from the fungi themselves. And the spores of fungi have a large range of sizes, and this is um, dependent upon the species, uh, environmental factors, so like relative humidity, and the age of the um, culture, and so on. So the other thing that the recall data signals to us are the types of fungi that are most likely to be um, the cause of pharmaceutical recall. So this gives us some information on the types of fungi that we could well find within pharmaceutical environments, particularly uh, poorly controlled pharmaceutical environments. So in terms of sort of order of occurrence, and this is based on my own interpretation of the recall data. So the most common fungus that, that, that's highest up on this list is Cladosporium. So Cladosporium is a melanized um, fungus. Yeah, there are certain types of Cladosporium that you may well find in your bathroom. It appears as the sort of the, the black, the black mold. And it is a common indoor mold. And it's found on living and dead plant material. And it likes um, damp conditions. And, and this stands up as the um, number one recall. And then that's going to arise from um, areas within the facility where there's been uh, fabric damage, for example, and you've got ingress of spores. Coming second is penicillium. So penicillium is a common soil fungus. It prefers slightly cooler, uh, more moderate climates. Um, it, it's a well-known food spoilage pathogen. So um, the risk from uh, pharmaceutical facilities is likely to come from somewhere in the external environment, maybe in association with vegetation, and some form of ingress or, or transfer event that, that's causing that fungus to get in. After this, we have um, Aspergillus as the third most common fungus for recalls. So again, Aspergillus uh, species are common to most environments, um, and some species can cause particularly serious disease in humans. Uh, this is through the production of uh, particular mycotoxins called aflatoxins. Fourth place we have Autonaria. And this is a fungus that um, can cause allergic reactions in people, so certain people can have um, chest infections that could be triggered by Autonaria. Uh, and it can be linked to um, hyper, other hypersensitivity reactions, sometimes leading to asthma. And again, Autonaria can be found uh, indoors or um, outdoors. Um, but more like, it's less likely to perhaps be living within the fabric of the facility. More likely it's going to be again a transfer event that, that's bringing that fungus in or some form of faulty on HVAC system. And then we have um, Trichophyton. 
So trichophyton is a fungus that is associated with humans. So it's a uh, almost a parasitic-like fungus that comes in association with the human body, and it's the cause of conditions like athlete's foot and jock itch, and also nail bead scalp infections. So where we find trichophyton, this is a breakdown of good personnel behaviours, uh, good gown control in particular. So changing rooms are going to be a fundamental source of that. And then we have the only yeast, which is uh, candida. So candida is universal on, on, on the skin of most um, people. It can cause harm if it ends up in the wrong uh, place, so it can cause conditions like thrush. So again, when we find candida, that's going to be um, part of the breakdown of the um, gamut control system. So of those two fungi uh, of, of the six that are presented, and the two that are uh, pathogenic are candida, so candida is an opportunistic contaminant, particularly for those people who are immunocompromised. Um, the most significant species of fungus is candida. And then Aspergillus, in particular, with its generation of uh, mycotoxins, and probably Aspergillus fumigatis and Aspergillus flavus are going to be the most common, and these can, in particular situations, trigger allergic responses. Okay, so we've looked at some fungi. Now let's try and relate that to pharmaceutical um, processing. Um, so, clean rooms and controlled areas are the basic structure of pharmaceutical operations and products are prepared within these areas. So like all forms of microbial contamination, fungi can particularly, uh, potentially rather be present in clean rooms, particularly lower grade clean rooms, um, where the controls may be weaker in terms of uh, personnel and equipment and material transfer and what we need to do is to ensure that higher grade clean rooms particularly if we're in sterile products manufacture uh, aseptic areas in particular that we have measures in place to prevent the transfer from grade D to grade C to grade B and certainly uh, avoiding any instances in grade A and um, so the Biggest risk, I believe, is that you know most facilities have good personnel, downing controls. The bigger risks are going to come from um, poor control of materials, so uh, not having suitable numbers of wrappings, not having triple or quadruple wrapping, and able to remove those layers and undertake adequate sporocidal disinfection. Or lack of controls are avoiding um, anything wet or materials that have a higher fungal association like cardboard from going into the facility. And fungal spores pose a, a big risk because they're easily dispersed within the clean room environment. So we can have um, concerns around weak clean room design. Um, so there can be aspects of the clean room design that can lead to the greater proliferation of fungi when our fungi to be transferred in, or provide niches for fungi to grow. So these could be areas that are not um, damaged in some way and not operating the way they should be, and which are potentially not easy to clean or to disinfect. So dual kickback plates, for example, are a particular risk. Um, types of materials, tree wheels, uh, particularly if there's ever movement from of, of, of or carts from uh, one area to another. Loose ceiling tiles, damaged flooring. Um, vibrations from construction can deposit spores into airstreams, particularly if they're affecting, say, the uh, seal or positioning of, of HEPA filters in its part of an HVAC system. Forty like fixtures. Um, and then the, the, the standard transfer, the uh, failure to uh, practice good transfer disinfection using a spore site can be uh, quite a big issue. And then with buildings and building designs, if we have um, poorly ventilated areas, uh, areas with insufficient air change rates, 
this can help fungal spores remain in the area ridges or cracks so let's say it could be like a step over that's not sealed properly to the wall um, so material so there is exposed plaster or paint now we wouldn't have plaster or painted walls within the clean room but if there was some vinyl that wasn't um, complete then these can provide uh, nutritional sources for fungi um, uh, just as an aside um, research shows that fungi prefer matte finished paint to high gloss paint so that type of paint is even more of a risk within the uh, clean room and Cladosporium, Aspergillus and Penicillium are those types of fungi that um, studies on environmental monitoring recovery suggest could be most likely recovered from uh, environments with weaker control so they are more of the predominant cleaning types of fungi that we could um, recover. There are also particular risks that can arise from uh, incoming uh, materials for example um, so particular raw materials, those of uh, plant origin, could pose a greater risk of fungi, again Cladosporum, Mortinaria, Fusarium are fungi associated with that. Certain packaging materials, um, or the way that materials are stored if they're subject to risk of dust. Uh, cardboard, cardboard is something you never want to ever have near the pharmaceutical um, facility. Um, in relation to packaging, uh, again, literature suggests penicillium and aspergillus are uh, have a higher association. And then we can have certain uh, issues with filters as well, um, particularly anything cellulosic may have a particular risk, particularly from cladosporium, uh, for example. And then uh, poorly maintained HVAC systems present a, a particular risk, and, and, and there's a study. Um, about uh, 15 years old now, but it was in uh, um, the Occupational Environmental Hygiene Journal and this uh, involves surveying HVAC systems using uh, lift tapes and it was looking for presence of fungi and it found that Cladosporium, which loops back to my earlier points about that being a significant indoor mould, uh, being uh, the most likely fungus to be present if a fungus is going to be present and particular risks in relation to duct work, cooling coil fins, and lower wheel uh, fan lights. With manufacturing environments in general, then uh, particular risk factors can arise from areas that are wet or damp, uh, where we get um, higher areas of humidity um, in association to changing rooms. Um, if we have ineffective cleaning and disinfection in general, that's going to present um, some risks. Um, some facilities, uh, depending on where they are in the world, might be more subject to risks at different times of the year. So myself in the UK, um, it's often that period from May to uh, July that is under a, a, a bigger risk from external factors if we have poor transfer controls. Um, and just general levels of, of ventilation for, for clean rooms is important. It also stands that fungal identification is important for helping with environmental monitoring risk assessments and working out the origins. Um, and this is not as simple because um, not all microbiologists, not all bench microbiologists have sufficient knowledge of fungi, so we need to try and boost that knowledge um, within the um, industry. So understanding the microbial identification helps to consider the source, to help us formulate kappa, to allow us to track that contamination through the facility, uh, to look for trends and, and so on. And some of the fungi that I've discussed, we would look to some of the causes and origins that uh, might well signal where, where some of that contamination is coming from. The optimal methods for fungal identification are genotypic. And unlike bacteria, where the genotypic methods look at the highly conserved 16S RRMA region, fungi, it tends to be um, genotypic methods based on assessment of the inter internal transcribed um, spacer regions, or ITS, which be as a reliable target for identification uh, using PCR amplification and uh, sequencing. So um, it's more likely a specialist laboratory 
would help with that. But knowing that genotypic origin allows um, for effective screening and tracking and tracing and all those other good practices that um, microbiologists should be. Okay, so this was a short introductory video. We've looked at uh, the most common types of fungi in pharmaceutical facilities from recall data, some of the uh, areas of origin, uh, areas where we need to pay particular attention to control, and we've um, looked at the identification methods as well. So, thank you very much for watching this video. I am Dr. Tim Sandal, and uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for further um, science, pharma, microbiology type of videos. Thank you very much.